In an old house in Paris that was covered in vines lived twelve little girls in two straight lines. This was the opening verse of each book in a series of delightful children's stories written by Ludwig Bemelman, with the focus being on an old girls' school and in particular one young girl, Madeline. Through their simple illustrations and writing prose, those are charm in these books, and Bemelman managed to give his characters real conflicts. The first book, published in 1939, famously involved Madeline getting her appendix out and the excitement that comes from this. While the adventures of Madeline never got too grand, that element also allowed the books to stand out. A constant in the books was Madeline's relationship with the nun who ran the school, Miss Clavel. She frequently dealt with Madeline's inability to stay in line, and yet she nonetheless understands her actions. That dynamic is definitely key, as is Madeline being a spirited and likable lead. The Melmans didn't give the other girls a lot of characterization, mainly to build up Madeline's personality. That's logical, as the focus of the stories was frequently on her. Each book expanded on Madeline and added new elements to her world, including a dog named Genevieve and the Spanish ambassador's mischievous son, Pepito. The Melmans took great care in making the stories fun with the right lessons in character development, and I think that's why the books have endeared for so long. The illustrations, too. The twelve girls walking in a straight line in their yellow outfits is instantly iconic for a reason. Madeline is one of those characters like Mickey Mouse or Super Mario, where one just has to see an image of her in the famous blue dress and yellow straw hat, and they already know who she is. The popularity of the books has, of course, led to a number of screen adaptations. The first was an animated short by UPA that adapted the first book. The limited animation style is a fitting match for this translation of the book. The humor and charm was kept fairly intact, and the short earned a well-deserved Oscar nomination as a result. Shirley Temple produced a version of Madeline for her television series, which adapted many classic stories for a young audience. While I have not seen it, the attention to detail is certainly there. Deke eventually got the rights to adapt Madeline, which they did in a series of specials and eventually a television series. While the specials adapted the original books, the series went in their own direction, yet still kept the spirit of the books intact. The animated series and specials also tried to give more personality to the other girls in the school, although Madeline remained the star of the show. These were my introduction to the Madeline stories, and I imagine that was the case for many around my age. In 1998, a film adaptation was released that combined four of the books into one story. Something that has to be admired about this take was it didn't really attempt to modernize the material. They kept it in a period setting and did not fill the movie with scatological jokes and pop culture references. It was a very respective take on the books, although combining them together led to it having an episodic feeling. While the nationalities of the characters were kept the same, Madeline, the other girls, and their landlord, Lord Cuckoo Face, were given British accents, and Miss Clavel and Pepito had American accents. I understand the idea was to make it more palatable to English-speaking audiences, but then all of the extras are speaking French. The film also throws in a plot involving Soviet spies trying to kidnap Pepito, and that's when it ventures closest to Home Alone territory. With that said, Frances McDormand is great as Miss Clavel, and Hattie Jones makes for a charming Madeline. She apparently came this close to playing Hermione Granger, which I can believe. There is an innocence to the film, and it's a family film that is willing to develop character. This adaptation also changed Madeline into an orphan, which has led many to believe she was one in the books. I think the filmmakers did that to heighten the stakes for the subplot where Lord Cuckoo Face plans to sell off the school, so it's not a bothersome departure. And the ending is rather sweet. If you're a fan of Madeline, it's not bad. Following the release of the film, more animated episodes were produced, and even a couple of direct-to-video animated features hit the shelves, albeit with not much fanfare. The Madeline stories are a part of a lot of people's childhood, and I think it's because she's a character willing to break free from society's rules and see the good in everything, whether it's an appendix being removed or the lonely boy living next door. These are books that are going to continue to be read and discovered for many, many decades. That's all there is. There isn't any more.